gotta get comfortable with this big old belly. <laughs> okay, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Lynn White and Hazel will be up here very soon, I'm sure. Come here, baby. There she is, the baby. Um, Today's video has been one of my most requested videos ever to date, and that is how in the world did we conceive the gender of our choice? So let me start off with saying that this is just for fun. Um, take it with a grain of salt, the stuff I'm going to tell you. Um, this is what worked for us. It is not 100%. I am not God. I just wanted to give it a try. I have two children from my first marriage, Isabella and Drew. Chris and I, the love of my life, we have three children together and they are all boys. So we have one girl and four boys. Five kids, I know that's a lot. And they are all my biggest blessings. Um, but since Liam, which is the third born, I have been wanting another little girl. And Liam, Josiah, and Noah, are all two years or less than two years apart. So um, after Noah, he was a sweet blessing and surprise. I was like, I'm never having any more children. And about two years in, the Lord started changing my heart. We started looking into fostering and then decided, um, as we were started going through the process and I was thinking about like going to the courses and all that type of stuff, I felt like the Lord opened my heart to try one more time for our own. Um, Chris and I were super adamant that we only wanted a girl. We just wanted to balance our, out our family. And I had gender disappointment with Noah. If you don't know what that's about, um, I would do your research before you leave any comments, especially negative ones down below. Women shouldn't be shamed for it. So I'm just gonna throw that out. But I did, I suffered with that until they laid that sweet baby on my chest and then it all made sense. But for nine months, I was pretty, just not in the right uh, state of mind. So I had such a bad, uh, a bad experience with Noah. I was like, I could never carry a boy again. I just couldn't. So I'm not going to have any more children. But then the Lord put it on my heart. And so at that moment, I started talking to Chris about it and he was not at all interested. He was like, absolutely no. And so I kind of just researched and i looked at extreme things from like in gender and gender dreaming and all this stuff you can find online a ton of things on facebook for trying to get the gender of you want, that you want and i was a part of those types of groups for about a year to 18 months and the stuff that they wanted to do to conceive the gender of their choice was just a little off the walls for me i have no i have absolutely no issue if people want to do that that is okay but some of the things i saw for myself i was like i know i can't do that i'm just not going to do those things so still felt very adamant like i just want a girl i just want a girl i just want a girl but then i came to the realization that i would never ever in my life try again if i wouldn't be 100 percent okay with whatever god gave me and so i prayed on that for a long time and he changed my heart and so during that time that he changed my heart, I'm still talking to Chris and he's still adamantly no. And so I just kind of keep researching and researching and I found the group, the baby dust method. I am gonna link the video about the details of the baby dust method um, in my description box below on my other channel. But basically it is timing and frequency. And so I would highly suggest that you guys find the baby dust method on facebook and join it if this is something you're interested in you can go very extreme with gender swaying or not um when i found the baby dust method i did read the book you can get the book on amazon and i will do my best to keep i will link that down below i started following the group following the group facebook group when it was very 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 small so she and i talked a lot and that's when I did the video on my other channel talking about the details which again I'll link that and you can watch it but basically um, it's frequency and timing and so for a girl you are going to chart your ovulation for three months at least three months if you go into my Amazon stores I'll show you all it has all of the um, OPK 
uh, wait, is it OPK? Yeah, uh, ovulation predictor kit. <laughs> Uh, all of the kit and the testing and every all the little tests that you can get through Amazon. I like OneFlow or the Baby Dust Method brand. Those are my favorite. Don't get the cheapies. Trust me, I wasted money on cheapies. And you test for three months. Basically, you're going to test every day from uh, cycle day five. So the first day of your period is cycle day one. So by cycle day five, you're going to start testing morning and night for your LH surge. And you will do that until you get your next period. And basically what you wanna do is get an idea of what day you surge. And when you surge, your test line will be darker than your control line. Read the book. If you go to the Facebook page and you haven't read the book and you're asking questions, the group is so big now and people are real, you know how social media is. They're not always rude, but sometimes you can get some of those mamas that are just real, mm, get on my nerves. Just, just answer the dang question. But there's lots of resources and files and information in that group that you can probably get your answers, your questions answered. But And so you're gonna do that and you will basically be able to predict the day that you are going to surge. You'll know when you ovulate because for me, for me, I know when I ovulate because my drive goes up and I, I do feel a little bit of cramping down there. The biggest thing about this whole process is you will learn your body. And when you wanna conceive a girl, you're gonna to wanna to baby dance. We'll just say baby dance, cause I don't wanna, if you have kids around, you're gonna to wanna to baby dance two to three days before that surge before the book will teach you how to get your best estimate if you have days where you search on like 16 or days you search on 10 and days you search on 14 it'll tell you how to get your estimate your best range to baby dance to be able to conceive the gender you want if you want to have a girl you're going to baby dance one time in your entire fertile cycle one time again one time nothing else unprotected only that one time two to three days before you ovulate again you have to read the book and you have to test three months before you try to be able to know your cycles and to know your body and that is what this program did for me it made me insanely aware of what my body was doing so i actually started testing probably oh gosh two years honest to God, off and on for two years before we even conceived. Because I started, like I told you before, I had it on my heart to try. The Lord finally put a piece in my heart that I would be okay with any gender. Then I was like, okay, I'm really going to go for it. So now I'm like, okay, I want to do this. Chris was like on the fence. So I just tested just in case he would be ready. And he wasn't. He kept saying, okay, well, when the kids get out of school, okay, well, Okay, well, what about when the kids go back to school? Okay, so what about what about next year? Next summer, let's do it. No, let's wait till next, it was just a mess and it constantly was delaying it, delaying it, delaying it. And I was getting so frustrated because I had it in my heart so much that we would get our girl, we would get our, a baby, and I knew that if I got a boy that I did everything I could possibly do and I was gonna be thankful. Um, but there was something in my heart that I just felt like this was going to work. But I was at a place where I was thankful regardless, because again, I am not God. All children are a blessing. I just want to emphasize if you are going to have gender disappointment, if you don't get the gender you want, you may want to reconsider doing this because it stinks to, to feel bitter and feel sad and depressed about your pregnancy. And I wouldn't want you to go through that. So please soul search, pray, do all the things you have to do to be at peace with whatever gender you get because this is not 100%. Um, it's all fun and games. I don't want it to break your heart if you don't get the gender you want because that's devastating. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Finally, Chris was like, okay, let's go for it. And we were going to try in January of 2020. And then I was like, I got scared. And I'm like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And so I waited and waited, and then finally April, we tried. We baby danced four days before ovulation. I also took cranberry pills 
and licorice root from cycle day one to the first day of ovulation. Cranberry pills I got from Target. I just took whatever the dosage said. Licorice root I got from Target, whatever the dose said. I think it was from Target. That's all he did. I also limited red meat, absolutely no bananas, limited potatoes. So we can see the first try, we were so excited. And if you guys have been here for a while, we ended up miscarrying that baby on uh, at the seventh week, which was devastating. So um, I had my first period come back after the miscarriage. I was like, well, maybe we will try. And I took my licorice root and my cranberry, but not consistently. And we tried and we did not get pregnant that month. So let's see, June is when I miscarried. I got my period back. We tried for July, did not happen. And then um, August still had been charting, but I don't, for August, like I still charted, but I wasn't as like, I was charting like twice a day, morning and night for all those years and whenever. I, and like I said, I would chart um, for two years, but it wasn't every single month, just because like it was like for three months and then I would take a month or two off and then I would do another three months and I'd take a couple of months off because I knew Chris wasn't ready. But before I actually tried that very first time in April, you better believe I had been charting since August, <laughs> seriously August the year before because I was like, okay, now we'll do it. Now we'll do it. Now we'll do it. So I knew what I needed to do. And like I said, this, the whole purpose of this is just to mainly know your body. Um, but then I did chart, uh, after the miscarriage and I charted August, but I wasn't doing it twice a day. Like I usually do it. I was just doing it once or maybe in the evening. So I kind of had an idea. I have known my body. I've been doing this so much off and on. I kind of know what's going on. I know how I'm feeling. I know the throbbing or the cramping. I know when the drive goes up. I just know my body because it's been so many years of charting and just knowing when to ovulate. Yeah. So now this is going to get a little more graphic. So if you do have kids in the room, I would just appreciate it if you took them out, but because this is obviously a double conversation, when you go and you talk to people about gender swaying, there's so many things that you can do. And one of the things that people said to do is after you baby dance, um, you don't, you immediately get up and go wash yourself, wash everything on your body and try to get out as much stuff as you can. And I know that sounds really bad, but it's called a jump and dump. You can look it up. And so, <laughs> it sounds so crazy. So after we baby dance, which it was not planned, it just happened. And I was like, if this happens, I'm in my girl window, but I don't really even know if I want to have another baby. Whatever, we, we baby dance. And then I immediately cleaned up and that is how we got our girl. So for us, it was charting. I know this, this story was all over the place, but it was time, you know, and there was only one time. There was only one time unprotected. And so I, I just can't emphasize that enough. So it ended up being two days before ovulation and one time unprotected. We don't ever have relations not unprotected just because we've had so many surprises. Just that one time and then like I had mentioned, I got up immediately, cleaned up, cleaned out and went about my business. Took my licorice and cranberry root as directed on the back of the bottle, um, but it was very sporadic this month. No red meat, limited potatoes, absolutely no bananas. If I'm being very honest, I think that my prayer on the topic is what was the deal breaker. I did chart all that time. I did take the supplements. I did limit those foods, but I prayed my tail off for years for this baby. And I can't stress that enough. I also was at a such peace with whatever God gave me. And then again, two to three days before ovulation, after you've been charting three months before you even try, and then only one time unprotected should really increase your odds of swaying. Follow the Facebook page, um, read the book, 
Get the good test strips. All of that's in my Amazon and you should be good to go. That's what worked for me. You guys have asked. I've talked to you guys about the baby dust method years ago and I finally tried it and it worked and I'm so thankful. I can honestly say that if we would have found out it was a boy, I would have rejoiced. I really, really, really would have rejoiced. So that is such a big thing with being at peace with whatever you get. I know this was a very long story. I hope you guys hung in there, but like I said, like I just mentioned, that is basically it. That's all you have to do. Um, you, for me, I didn't feel like it was necessary to go do all the crazy stuff that you will find online. So the baby dust is what worked for me. I hope that it works for you. Try to connect with Katherine Taylor and the sweet ladies over there on that page. And the book is like not a thick book. You can be done with it in about an hour and a half. I was. So if you are looking for a very light read, read that book if this is something you're interested in or even maybe you're considering because the book will give you details and the science behind everything. I'm just giving you my personal information. Like I say, said in my last video, my stories are all over the place. I'll talk about one topic and be somewhere totally different. So I hope I was able to stay on track as much as possible. You guys have been asking for this video. So here it is. And I will say that if you are looking to sway for a boy, it's just slightly different. You're going to have two times unprotected and you are going to be about day uh, the day you're going to baby dance on ovulation day and the day after or two days after. But again, read the book. This is what worked for me. Baby Emma is on her way and she should be here in May. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm, it's surreal to think that I am actually having a baby girl. So I'm so thankful for the research. I'm so thankful that God answered my prayers and I'm just so thankful that I get to experience this again. I'm also thankful for you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'm sorry that I am such a talker. Please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. Um, I hope you felt like you were chatting with the friends. I know I'm not as, as I probably should be, but this is me. So I love you all so much. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep up with Miss Emma due in May 2021, and I would love to have you join my little family. If you guys want some cleaning, decor, declutter, and organizing inspiration, my main channel will be in the description box as well as over on my featured channel. So definitely follow me over on my main channel as well for weekly cleaning motivation. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.